everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. <laughs> I am long arming today. I am about to go ahead and quilt. This is the grandma's girl that I made up last fall, I guess, on a whim. This is Cory Oder's fabric called Cozy Up, and I just loved it. And I did something real simple with it. It's a very easy pattern. Let me get it. It's just half square triangles and three rows of them. That's all it is. The butler has some quirks, definitely has some quirks. So the thing about the quilt butler is, and maybe all tablets, I don't know. If you're very new to it, you have to tell the computer the area that it needs to quilt in. And then within that area, so that is what the butler calls your first pattern box. And you normally do that by telling it the back left corner and the front right corner. Um, people who work with CNC machines will understand that, how all that works. You've got to, you've got to set an area. And for the robotics to work properly on the butler, your area is always measured by the computer in a diagonal, much like a TV. You know, you get the, it'll say you have a 48 inch TV. Well, if you measure it across the width, it's not 48 inches. But if you measure it from like this on a diagonal, you get the 48 inches. So it's very much like that. And then once you have that initial pattern box, you can create dozens of pattern boxes within that pattern box to quilt separate designs. And that's how you would quilt like a beautiful feather design in an area that is, you know, is a square. And that gives me a brilliant idea I'm going to try this particular quilt has these big triangles on it. What if I custom quilt it with feathered triangles? One of those, like a corner unit triangle. Wouldn't that be pretty? Wow, what a great idea. I wonder how that would look. <laughs> I think it would be pretty. What would I do with the rest of the quilt? Oh my gosh, let's give it a shot. Why not, right? Okay. So the first thing I need to do is get that line straight across, but before I can do that, I have to tell the computer the area that I want it to quilt in. It just wants that, even though I don't need to do that right now, but that's what it wants. So let's go over to the computer. On the butler, over on the left, you have a row of icons, and you will always use these four. They have home, edit, patterns, and layout. And you use these four predominantly to do all of your design work. So the strange thing about all of this is you don't work from the top down, which your brain would want to do. You work from layout up. So you start with layout and then you choose the pattern in the layout and then you edit the pattern to determine how many repeats you want and that type of thing. And then you go to home and that's where all your stitching occurs. So if you have any pattern boxes on here right now, you would hit the new button and get a brand new layout. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to touch the bottom corner. Once I move the machine, I just moved it. Let me show you where. So that the foot is like a foot width, about a quarter, you know, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch at the top corner of the quilt. I want to quilt it from right up here, which gives me a little bit over the edge and a little bit over the top, which is fine. That way I know for sure that the pattern is going to come over and cover the edge of the quilt. So I'm going to back it up a little bit because I actually, this is going to be my, uh, my starting line kind of right there. So I'm going to touch plus, I got zero. Now I'm going to move it all the way to the other end of the quilt and down toward the belly bar. Bring it down here, just past the edge 
I pull it all away until it can't go forward anymore. It's not touching the belly bar. It's actually hitting the machine back here in the back, the body of the machine. And I'm going to back it up just a little bit, about an inch or so, and hit the plus sign. There we go. So now I have a table width of 74.38 and a height of 13.44. That's a pretty big quilt. So now I'm going to tell it OK. Now that is the main pattern box for the layout. That's exactly what I'm after. And now that that's been established, I can go ahead and do my straight line using my channel locks to be able to lay the quilt on straight. So to do that, I'm just going to go to home. And my channel lock buttons are right over here. And you have the uh, lock from left to right, which means it will not move from left to right. You have the lock for up and down, which means it will not move up and down. And then you have a diagonal lock. You have a degree that you can do it if you don't want to do a straight uh, 45 like that. You can tell it what degree you want, and then it has the nesting button with the five little hearts. Up here, you're at uh, 12 stitches per inch. You can turn the needle on and off so you can see where the pattern is going to stitch without actually stitching. And then you have the green go and the red stop. So that's what everything is on that menu. And I'm going to turn the light on so I can see what I'm doing. And in order to do that, I'm going to touch settings and that button right there. And on the settings, you have a white light, a black light, or this is for your, um, your laser in the back if you're working from the back of the machine. So I had a power failure, and that's why that didn't go on. Let me turn it on. There we go. Now my light is on on my quilt top. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that line by going back to my robot up here on the top, and I don't want it to move up and down, so I need to put the head of the machine, the needle, right where I want it to start at the right height back and forth. And it doesn't matter that this is outside of the pattern box, because I can change the pattern box, and that's fine. It just makes me do that before I can even get to the channel lock thing. That's one of the quirks about this. I wish I could do channel locks without having to tell it a pattern box, but it won't let me. So... And if anybody knows how to do that, let me know. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the do not move up and down button, which has a lock on it for the vertical. Touch that. And now I can't move the head. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring a, uh, my bobbin thread up. I prefer, performed uh, oil maintenance on this right before I started. On the Quilt Butler, I'm sorry, on the King Quilter Special Edition, they give you a couple of oiling points. I have a couple more. I'll do a blog post on that. So I'm going to do a lock right now, a tie-off lock, which is the three quick stitches. So I touch the light blue button. And now I'm just going to touch the green button and go across the, the quilt. I can go into the stitches and do a basting stitch. Eh. Whatever. to turn off the go and I'm going to do the blue tie off and pull up my bobbin thread by doing the red button one time and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Okay, now I'm going to use my quilting pins and I am going to pin the quilt top directly to the line, the edge of it, and make sure that it is pinned on straight. 
Okay, I have pin basted the quilt top to the backing and the batting. And I have got OXO chip clips <laughs> with waistband elastic. These are my grips on each side. They work fabulous. And this is a heavy elastic cord and some toggles. And I made this to um, put on what would otherwise be the batting bar. I'm sorry, the, top, the bar that the top is on. And I attach that on both ends of the quilt and then I use, I have three toggles, and I need one toggle for center, and I just leave it, I just kind of place it on center. This is the center seam of the quilt, and then I'm going to take this other toggle, and I'm going to move it right here on the this edge of the quilt down here. Where's my other toggle? Oh, wrong. This toggle goes on this edge. I can slide them. They have little, you can squeeze them like this. They're just like toggles that you'd have at the bottom of a windbreaker. And I just squeeze them. And that way I can eyeball and make sure that the edge of my quilt, it has like a, like a point on it. And I can see the edge of my quilt is centered on that toggle. And then I've got center. Right here, you can use a centering ruler or uh, measuring tape or anything like that, but this is just really easy for me. And then I've got this one down here at this end, and this is great. So as I advance the quilt, I'm going to take it off while it's quilting, but as I advance the quilt, I'm going to check each time and put this back on and check and make sure that it is, that it is lined up straight and it's not going wonky or anything. Underneath the frame, I have a hammock, handy quilter hammock under there. I got from boldnotionquilting.com, and it's holding the, the rest of the quilt and the batting underneath. I'm preventing it from getting all over the floor. I do sweep before I start. So now I am going to baste the quilt to the batting and the backing and I put my pins anywhere from half an inch to an inch below the edge so I don't stitch over them and I'm just going to start in the middle Whoop. I'm going to start in the middle and then go side to side I use the red button to pull up the bobbin thread blue button to tie off and green button to go. I keep the foot, um, the back edge of the foot, kind of right at the edge of the fabric, maybe a little close, a little off of it, so that this stitch uh, happens inside of the binding. The channel lock is off. Right, and when I reach here, I'm going to go straight down as far as I can, just catching the edge of the quilt top. I like to have a trash can at both ends of the frame so that all these little threads, I've got somewhere to put them. I'll put a link below to this little magnet that I have. I, I love this thing. I use it all the time. And these scissors are just little snips. I think these are from Lori Holt, just little snips. They've got a tiny bit of a curve to them and I like that because it gets my it gets my uh, snip pretty close without catching the fabric. When I get near the end, that, ah, oh, broken needle. So the needles I'm using are the Gros Beckert, I guess, and I'm using the 9014. This is what they recommend from the manufacturer. 
and that last needle has done many, many quilts, so it's about time anyway. And I just re uh, replaced it, and now I'm going to just do a little test, make sure everything's okay with the tension, and it's stitching properly, so... That looks really good and it feels good. I think we're okay. <laughs> so now it is time to pick a pattern. Well, I thought I was going to put one of those triangles in this entire big triangle right here, and I can't because the needle can't get all the way over here. It's not, I don't have a big enough throat on the machine. So I'm going to go back and do the simple triangles, and I'm going to do four of them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch like this row up here first, and then I'll do this row. So that's how I'll have to do that. So what I want to do now, I want to put that another one right here. All right, I've already stitched a couple of rows of the way I have wanted to quilt this. And so I'm going to show you this part of it because I won't be filming when I get to the other end of this row I'm about to start. So I'm going to go into the robot and what I'm going to do is stitch this feather in one of the triangles as I work my way down the row. So what I'd like you to look at is right here at the bottom. This says 16 slash 16. What that means is there are 16 pattern boxes that I stitched on the last row that I did. And one of those pattern boxes is the primary one that I created when I went from back left corner to front right corner. So I stitched an additional 15 patterns on that row. And now I want to start all over again at another row. Now I could keep going from here, but I don't want to. It just, this is just my brain. I'm going to go back and you'll see it goes to 15 of 16. I'm going to go into layout. Let me go back to 16 of 16. I'm going to hit the minus sign over here and delete the pattern box. Continue. Yes. So now it says 15 of 15. And I'm going to go all the way back until I only have the primary pattern box left. So I want to hit minus. You don't have to do this. I just want to do it. Okay. So you can see here are all of those feather boxes where I was quilting all the way down. I created a different pattern box for every one of them to quilt the design as a separate different design in each one. The process I'm about to show you is exactly how you can quilt individual designs in particular boxes. See that one, I tried to do two of the patterns at one time and you might think it worked okay. That was to prevent me from having to do a couple different pattern boxes. But if you look, you can see the diagonal line. It wasn't right on it. And I didn't look at that before I did it and it came out. Okay. It's not great. So I'm just going to minus that. Okay. And okay. So now you don't see any numbers down here. I'm in the layout menu and you don't see any numbers, but this is the main basic pattern box. So now I want to quilt that feather design in a triangle shaped pattern box. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create a new pattern box and you do that by pressing the plus sign. Now it says set the first point in the pattern box and you have an X and a plus and I'm pointing these out so that 
You can watch me move on the quilt and I'll just tell you what buttons I'm gonna push. So this is one big square right here and I can't quilt the whole square at one time customized. So I'm going, I just changed it into four triangles so that it kind of flows with the rest of the quilt. And to set the first point in the pattern box, I'm going all the way back here. I drew chalk lines with my ruler and I'm gonna to touch the plus sign and now I'm gonna drag it to the front point. And when you create a pattern box, you have to go in a counterclockwise fashion. And I'm gonna to touch the plus sign. And then when I get to the last point, I have the choice, let me bring you up. I have the choice of X minus plus and check. So here is my little triangle right here. I don't have to hit the plus sign unless I was gonna to go to another point, but when you're at the point before last, you can just hit the check mark and it will close the shape. So you can see that's not exactly perfect on the screen. That's okay. Now, as I had told you earlier, you use the buttons from layout all the way up. And I'm gonna to go to patterns. And there is that feather design I'm using. I'm just gonna hit the check mark. Now I need to get this great big feather pattern into that little triangle. And the way to do that is you've got green menus over here and on the inner menu, that's the one you use most of the time. And the very top icon is repeats. So that's why it has an arrow going horizontally and an arrow going vertically. And if you touch it, and here's where you can make repeats and you can set your spacing and offset and all that. We don't need to mess with any of that. You can see right here, I'm on pattern box two of two, which means that whatever I do here is going to go into pattern box two of two, not pattern box one, which is the main one that I did. So I'm going to just hit auto fill right here. So it has positioned the pattern inside of the triangle, but it's not the right angle. So now I'm gonna skip over this. The second one is the move button. And this next one is the rotate button. It's a square with arrows turning. So I'm gonna to touch the rotate button. And in rotate, again, we're still in two of two. I have a 45 degree to the left, a minus, I can do exactly an angle here, whoop. I can do exactly an angle here um, for whatever degree I want. I can go plus or to make it bigger or I can do 45 to the right. I'm gonna do 45 to the right. That's fine. It's not in the right place, but that's okay. Now the next button down is the stretchy button so you've got the icon with a square and it has arrows going both directions diagonally, which means to stretch it and make it larger. So I'm gonna to touch that. And then here, you, you've got bars that you can make it bigger or smaller height-wise or bigger or smaller length-wise. I'm not gonna fiddle with any of that. Right here, there's a smart skew button. It's got a little graduation cap there because it's very smart. I'm just going to touch that button and it has set itself perfectly inside of the triangle, and I'm not gonna fiddle with that at all. That's exactly where I'm gonna leave it. So I only had to touch a couple of buttons to make that work. And what I'm gonna do now is move the machine over to the green start point and get going and let it do its thing. I would rather it start a little bit further over into, over toward the edge instead of right here so let me show you how I'm gonna do that. Just because it was set with the buttons doesn't mean that that is set in stone. You can change that. All right, I'm just going to touch it. Now, you've got all kinds of circles on here where you can touch. If you touch the green one in the middle, you'll move the entire design. Or you can skew it the way you want it to be by just touching one of the buttons and then the pink circle down at the bottom is the rotate. So I want this one right here to be down in that corner 
but yet still inside of the box. I'm a little outside of it. Now, if I could change anything, and I will tell you, I do not have the current update for the butler. I had heard on Facebook that a lot of people had problems with the upgrade or the update, and so this is the original platform that came out back in 2018 when I bought this thing. And it didn't change anything here really minutely, just stretched it just a teeny tiny bit, but I'm good with that. One thing that's a quirk with this I wanna show you, you've got buttons down here. The white button with the red dot, orange dot, is so you can see the whole screen at one time. So that's how, now if I make it bigger by touching the magnifying glass larger, notice that my handles went away. I can touch that all I want and I will not get my handles back. It just won't do it. As soon as, and I can make it bigger by pinching, just like on an Android tablet. See, I would really like that little point further over toward that corner. I would like it closer to the corner. Well, if I touch it, I can't do anything with that. It won't let me. I could use the skew buttons over here and move buttons, but that's gonna move the whole pattern. I really only wanna move that little corner. The only way I can do that, and if you know different, please let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna go back to the regular view. Now when I touch it, there's my handles again. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Let me look bigger. Good enough for government work, okay. Now that I'm ready to stitch it, I'm gonna to go to home. Remember I told you, home is where all your stitching happens. So, I'm back here, and I'm just gonna to touch the green button to go, and it wants me to pull up my bobbin thread. So much of this is just understanding how the computer thinks differently than we do. And I just do this, it'll do a little lock, teeny tiny little lock stitch. So now it is time to create another pattern box to stitch this again, but at a different angle. Now that it's done and I've, I've trimmed the stitch, I'm gonna go back to layout. I'm gonna touch the plus sign to make another pattern box. And it says set the first point. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. Now I'm gonna show you on the screen what I do since you saw me do it on the fabric last go. So you, again, you have to do it in a counterclockwise direction. So you start at the top and I'm gonna touch the plus sign. I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom, touch the plus sign, take it all the way over to where it ended at the last one and touch the check mark. And there's my triangle. So now I'm gonna go to patterns and there's my feather, touch OK. I need to get the big feather into the triangle, so I'm gonna to go to the repeat button and touch auto fill. See again, I'm on three of three now. Now I need to angle it so it's the right direction in the triangle. I'm gonna to go to the skew or the rotate button, which is number three there. I'm gonna rotate it 45 this way until it's the right direction it's not in there straight, that's fine. I'm gonna to go to the skew button, resize button, and I'm gonna hit the graduation cap for smart resize, and that's perfect right there. Now see here, it starts down here in this corner, and I'm okay with that, that's fine. So all I have to do now is go to home, and I'm gonna to go to the green button, and when I do that, the machine is gonna automatically move to the start point. Touching the green button, and tell it, okay, there it goes. Pull up the bobbin thread. Okay, touch the check mark, it's gonna do a lock stitch. And it's gonna start the pattern.
I don't know if you can see it, but that turned out just beautiful. It really did. It's very nice. They're balanced. They're even. It looks great. I'll do one more at my regular speed so you guys can see how quick and easy this is. I'm glad I did that when that happened. So I'm running out of bobbin thread. Let me show you what to do. I have three bobbins preloaded. When that happens, I just, there's a pause button here or you can hit the red button on the handles. And when that happens, you have to, you've got thread break and start and you have to tell it thread break to release the locks on the, the robotics. So I'm gonna hit thread break. And now it says move to where the thread broke and press okay. So the needle stopped down. I'm going to pull it up. There we go. And I need to trim this. I heard the bobbin coming out. Oh, let's see. Looks like my stitches are pretty good all the way down to about here. So I'm just going to replace the bobbin. This bobbin has a tiny little pigtail right there. I use that. I figure it's there for a reason, so I've never seen another bobbin case with a pigtail, but I do use it. Okay. And I look in there and make sure there's no gobs of thread. I don't see any. Check my oil, make sure it's happy. Yep, we got plenty. A little dipstick like that. There's a lot of cool things about this machine that the Tin Lizzie put on that you don't find on other machines. And one of those is on the back here. It, let me move this. It threads, it, it winds its own bobbins back there. That's very handy, I like that. So when you have to replace the bobbin, you wanna put the needle back probably about three or four stitches before, I'm gonna make sure you've got good solid stitches. Yeah, I'm gonna put it about right here. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna go, do a good lock on the stitches that are already there as it stitches over them and you just, you won't see that. I guess a good habit to get into is if you are on a piece of fabric where it would show if you had, if you ran out of bobbin, you wanna not run that far into the bobbin. You wanna stop it beforehand so you don't have any kind of little wobbles of, of the threads when when it runs out. Okay, so what the what the butler wants to do is it's going to start on the closest stitch to where I put the crosshair. That's fine right there as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to hit the plus sign and hit the check mark. Is this where you want to restart? Yes. And so it's going to do that. If it was not on a stitch line in the pattern, the head would move to the closest stitch in the pattern. I pulled up the bobbin thread. It does the little lock stitch again. I should have done a test over in the batting to make sure it's okay, but it's usually pretty good. That's what you do if you run out of bobbin mid pattern. So that's how you do custom quilting with individual pattern boxes using the quilt butler. All right, you guys, go sew something. Bye.